Morning guys, morning here. Today I want to talk about my Bloodstock Run build. I previously said that I would not make a specific video about this character because it's kind of a like, very known concept and not very specific. But at this point I have invested quite a bit into the character and changed some stuff away from like how the other builds function and how they do their stuff and how they build because I have taken like five or six hundred divines and threw them onto the character to see what happens. And today's the day where I want to talk about what I have changed about the build. So here you already see I am using a swap setup for bosses. I do obviously not swap into the setup for like a Drox or something as you've seen he doesn't matter at all. But it's a pretty good setup for stuff like Uber Exarc and Uber Eater and stuff like that. So yeah, so first of all, what are these two setups? The first one is the Com Spirit setup that most people that use this build use. It's for having the Berserk and for yeah, just being big and fast and stuff like that. Um, on the clear setup, I usually am using face run instead of shield charge. Why I am using shield charge, we will take on later in this video. Then <clears throat> for the high end bosses, I am using the entropic devastation gloves together with the sublime vision, which I like take out storm shroud for. The storm shroud makes us elemental element immune and we don't really need that for like the bosses, the big bosses, because I don't care about the elemental elements they do because they usually are dead. So they don't really do anything. And yeah, <clears throat> so let's take a look at the gear I have changed other than like the jewels. So for the most part, I have just created a pretty big ring and I am working on essence worm corruptions. Here I currently am working on a percent strength essence worm. Currently I'm using a cannot be ignited because it's the best one I've got. Um, I have corrupted about 800 rings at this point and well, it's not going as well as I hoped. But yeah, <clears throat> other than that, let's take a look. We have boots. These boots are pretty normal for this build. They are pretty much what you're using, but they are like min max to the point where they are full tier one. <clears throat> they have action speed and cooldown recovery in the implicits. The cooldown recovery currently is completely overkill and it's not really used. Um, however, I currently am working on a different belt, which I can show here in a second. And when the belt is finished, I can take off the cooldown reduction from the helmet and go for malediction and curse effect, which is a lot stronger. This is the belt we are currently working on. We have strengths, increased attributes and 16 cooldown recovery. We are working on flat life and percent life, but the prefixes will take approximately five to seven hundred divines. So currently I'm just saving up to like craft further on the belt. Um, away from the belt, let's take a look at the amulet. For the amulet at this point I'm using a like stacking amulet with strength, max life. The suffixes we go for strength, max life and cast speed because we're reaching so high cooldown recovery that like all cast speed is pretty good and we want to like not be permanently reserved so that we don't die on the big bosses all the time because of some random hits but rather like be hit between the casts and then just run around for a second to unreserve the life again. So a lot of cast speed is very good for the build even though we are not um, getting more casts in we are getting faster casts in which still is very important to the character's survivability. Then for the body armor, I am using uh, quite an interesting body at this point. We are using Frenzy Chargers here. The Frenzy Chargers is the reason why we are using Shield Charge instead of Phase Run on like high-end bossing because Phase Run eats up our Frenzy Chargers and that is very annoying. So for high-end bosses, we're using Shield Charge to keep the Frenzy Chargers. Then we're using Pride Effect, Strength, Life, more Life, even more Life, and then more Life and increase attributes to gain more life. I currently still have a suffix open on the body. I'm not sure if I want to fill it. It's kind of a really cool body at this point and 
I can't really fill up the suffix in a like reasonable way, I guess, because we can't Ashling it, because we have an Ashling prefix. We could YOLO, YOLO slam it for a resistance or something, I don't know. But my resistances are <laughs> nearly kept, are kept when I'm using my, <laughs> my clearing setup. And it's kind of whatever. We could go for resistance here, but the body looks so good that I don't want to destroy it with like a mediocre resistance or something. That would be so sad. So I just keep it like this for now. Maybe I will put an exalt onto it at some point, but yeah, not yet. And yeah, this is pretty much the biggest change. Because of the six link, we can now use an um, Arcanist brand set up for Anomalous Vulnerability and anom Anomalous Assassin's Mark together with Empower and Enhance, which is quite a big damage boost for these skills. Um, then we're using Vulnerability and Feeble and Temp Chains with faster casting. Why are we doing that? Well, the obvious answer is the Balance of Terror. I am using in a Balance of Terror with Chance to do double damage, cooldown recovery and critical strike multiplier and when we're like before a zeros phase or like when maven is spawning just blah, 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 get the three buffs going and it's like yeah very easy uptime and yeah doesn't really matter it's such an enormous damage boost that like the it's okay to click three buttons here like it's whatever and you don't really need it f for the most part but when you need it it's very handy to have like a very quick cast to like give you a 30 to 40 or 50 percent more damage like yeah then what is very noticeable here is that i don't use this part of the tree anymore which most of the players do because it's a very very strong part of the tree we're getting a lot of crit multi we're getting a lot of life we're getting intelligence which is important to the character we gain dexterity and we gain pain attunement so pain attunement i do still have through my sanctified relic um, which just has critical strike multiplier and the pain attunement. It is not exceptionally good. It's just something I currently have because I needed a new one for pain attunement because my other one had least shade on it. So how do we replace this in a reasonable way? Well, and the answer is with a cluster jewel. And the cluster jewel, the only one that can replace this part of the tree is um, tier one strengths, all attributes, max life and increased effect, physical damage cluster jewel. This one is quite a monster. I just like it gives so much HP and attributes that we can take out this part of the tree because we're getting so much strength from it. We are at 1.6k strength with the unset ring and with the new belt we will be at so we can actually see that. Let's take a look. We will be at um 1.7 nearly like with five percent more we will be at like 1.8k strength which is pretty huge and gives a huge amount of flat, uh, like flat life so yeah and in addition we can take one more like rare jewel which i am using now and the oh, where is my jewels um sublime so vision <sighs> There, Forbidden Flame, Forbidden Flash. We are using the Slayer Forbidden Flame, Forbidden Flash combination because it gives Culling Strike, Overleech, which is really nice when we are not using Petrified Blood, and Area of Effect, and cannot take Reflect Physical Damage, which means that we can run absolutely all map mods. So we have not a single map mod we cannot run, we just run everything blind. We can do all map mods feared, it doesn't matter at all. And yeah, this is just very, very cool for the character to be able to do that now. Because previously I had to watch out for Fist Reflect and it was kind of annoying. Because if there's just one mod you cannot run, it's like you're looking through all your stuff just to filter out one mod, which is really annoying. <clears throat> so yeah. As I said, the next upgrades with the belt, because I need 15% cooldown reduction on the belt, which is fairly annoying, to replace the Glimpse of Chaos. Then we will put in a Glimpse of Chaos with Malediction and Curse Effect. Well, that is my goal for the next double corruption session. Uh, malediction and Curse Effect or Malediction and Aura Effect. Both of these are pretty good and will replace the current one. 
Um, that are my next like steps for the for the character the belt the helmet and the ring as you see we are working on a lot of rings I did already vendor like yeah, as I said 600 rings or so we've gotten 10 I've been a row of feathers which is quite cool um, but aside from that that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about um, I actually have taken out the um, where are these? The, 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 the Grand Spectrum Jewels for life because they are not really worth it anymore. I have so much life and so much percent life because I have like percent life on a lot of gear pieces as well. Like on the body armor we have 22%, we have 10% on the ring, we have 8% on the amulet and like 40% on the helmet, 50% on the uh, shield and stuff. We have a total of let's actually take a look here a total of 373 percent increased life so three grand spectrums would only push us a little over 410 percent or barely yeah barely over 100 and it's 118 percent life more or less because we're losing some life from rare jewels so they are not really worth it anymore for me they give about I believe 6% damage per slot and that's just not good enough for Grand Spectrum Jewels. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about, I believe. Um, I think the watches I, I showed the last time and actually this one is fairly bad divide. Uh, whatever. So yeah. If you have any questions about this character, I want to keep this fairly short. If you have any questions about this character or overall the gear or how to craft this, whatever, you can always write in the comments. I will answer everything I can and yeah, have a great day and or night or whatever and see you on the next video.